All right, welcome everyone um, and good afternoon. This is our uh, second Wednesday afternoon break with Foster Swift. I'm Mike Kassar, uh, Foster Swift attorney in our firm's employer services and workers comp defense practice groups. For those of you who knew, who are new, we host this webinar on second Wednesday of each month and I interview another Foster Swift attorney about the important and uh, relevant topics in the law that are current. Um, today, I'm gonna be interviewing Tony Dalamonte. Tony is an attorney in our Southfield office and his practice primarily consists of commercial litigation and handling all aspects of employment law issues. Um, Tony received his undergraduate degree as well as his master's degree in business management from the University of Michigan in Ann Arbor. He then went on to Wayne State University Law School where he received his Juris Doctorate. And he's been with Foster Swift ever since. Uh, today's interview will focus on a very relevant employment law topic, actually two different topics. The first is gonna be the minimum wage and paid sick leave laws here in Michigan. Um, there's a lot going on in that area. Things are in flux right now. And second, we're gonna be talking about the Federal Trade Commission's proposed blanket non-compete ban. Um, that's in the news recently as well. So if you have any questions throughout while we're going through this interview, you can type them in the chat box below. Um, I'm gonna be monitoring throughout the session, but let's get right into the questions for Tony. First of all, Tony, thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. So let's start with the minimum wage and paid sick leave um, laws here in Michigan. There's been a lot of news on this topic. There's been a lot of back and forth. Can you tell us a little bit about what's going on here? Sure. And, you know, we've our labor and employment team has, you know, been on top of this. And I'm sure you've seen some of the many articles that we've written over the last, you know, a couple months addressing this issue. But to provide a little background, um, in July of 2022, the Court of Claims uh, ruled that Michigan's Improved Workforce Opportunity Wage Act and Earned Sick Time Act, uh, which were the 2018 versions of Michigan's minimum wage and paid sick leave laws, uh, would be reinstated and the current minimum wage and paid sick leave laws uh, would be significantly changed. Um, without going into too much detail, Essentially, this ruling would have increased minimum wage, um, increased the minimum wage for tipped workers, and would have required nearly all Michigan employers to provide some level of paid sick leave to employees. And this was a big change because, you know, if you were a small business, you didn't have to provide um, paid sick time um, unless you had 50 or more employees. So those changes were set to go into effect on uh, February 20th. Um, just a week and a half away. Um, but of course, you know, the Court of Claims ruling was appealed. And we just found out two weeks ago, the Court of Appeals ruling came down, and they overturned uh, the lower court's decision. So that means that all the changes to minimum wage and paid sick leave that were going to happen are no longer happening. And uh, those laws remain unchanged for now. So this initially started at the Court of Claims and litigation and went up to the Court of Appeals. And that was the recent decision um, that the Court of Appeals made. And now we're going to be at the, the Michigan Supreme level, Supreme Court level. Is that the current status of the litigation right now? Yeah. So, you know, we watched the oral argument um, during the Court of Appeals, um, you know, proceedings. And it was clear no matter what happened, no matter who won, it was going up to the Michigan Supreme Court. Um, and so that's where we're at now. You know, I don't think an, an appeal has been filed, but, you know, we think it's very likely that this decision will be appealed. So, you know, employers can relax for now. Um, it, it's good timing because, you know, we, we dealt with many employers who are gearing up and changing their policies and handbooks to prepare for these changes that were gonna happen in a week. Um, and, you know, I don't want to speculate on, on what's going to happen, but, you know, we'll have at least a year, probably 18 months um, for a Supreme Court decision to come down. And it gives the Michigan legislature some time to come up with their own changes. So the moral of the story is nothing's changing for now. Um, and, you know, we'll keep an eye on whether or not uh, the governor and the legislature decide to make any changes of their own. Got it. That's incredibly helpful. There was one comment in the in the chat. Um, I just wanted to note that we we published this as a recording. Um, I think it, it goes onto YouTube. So 
you don't have to diligently take notes if you're curious about this particular topic or the next topic we're going to talk about. It'll be on YouTube. Um, we don't have a uh, like a physical presentation that we're going to send out though. Um, the next topic that I want to transition to away from the minimum wage and paid sick leave law is the Federal Trade Commission's proposed non-compete ban. So this is a really interesting topic. Um, President Biden even mentioned this in his State of the Union address last night, and he talked a lot about it. He talked at length about it. And essentially what he talked about is that he issued a directive to one of his executive agencies, the Federal Trade Commission, to look into these non-compete agreements. Um, all states allow them for the most part right now, and he told the FTC to look into um, these essentially. And what the FTC found is that there's 30 million U.S. workers that are bound by such agreements, and um, at least it's President Biden's stance and the FTC's stance that they might be limiting workers' wages, um, limiting workers' ability to move to other jobs, creating wage stagnation. So the FTC created this proposed rule, and Tony's going to tell us a little bit about it. Sure. So, you know, I know everyone in here probably knows what a non-compete agreement is, but if they're a, if someone doesn't, a non-compete agreement is essentially a contract provision where an employee promises not to take a job with a competing company of a former employer. And usually there's a time frame and a geographic scope that um, you know comes with these agreements. And the FTC proposed rule is a big deal because it does three things. First, it forbids employers from entering into non-competes with their workers, and that includes independent contractors. Second, it rescinds existing non-compete agreements with the current workers. And third, it requires employers to notify employees who previously signed a non-compete that those agreements are no longer in effect and may not be enforced. And the FTC's basis for this rule is essentially that non-compete clauses um, and are an unfair method of competition. And, you know, as Mike said, President Biden mentioned it last night in the State of, State of the Union address. So they're taking it very seriously. Um, they're taking a pretty hard stance on it. And, you know, it, it's also a big rule because this comes at the federal level and would preempt all inconsistent state law. So that means, you know, it, the Michigan standard um, and law of looking at non-compete agreements based on a number of factors um, for reasonableness, that would be out the window and this would um, control. So it's a big deal. Um, and, uh, you know, it, it definitely caused a lot of commotion and stir when it when it first came out a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, so it first came out, and I, I think this is correct, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but January 5th of 2023, so about a month ago, the FTC made this or issued this proposed rule and again, correct me if I'm wrong, Tony, but now we're in a comment period where the FTC is currently taking comments and doing a little bit more research on how such an implemented rule might affect things. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. We're in a 60-day comment period right now where the public and interested parties can go to a link on the FTC's website and basically, you know, say whether you know the rule's great or it's the worst rule in the world. You know, it, it allows the public to you know, provide their feedback. Got it. Again, this is a really big deal, but it's still a proposal. Are there any exemptions within this proposal? I know you mentioned it might be a blanket ban of these agreements. Are there any exemptions here? Not really. Um, the The proposed rule is, is basically blanket ban on all non-competes. Um, the one exception is for non-competes related to the sale of a business where a person or an entity is at least a 25% owner in the business. Um, but other than that, there's there's not really any other exceptions. And, you know, it, we're early in the process, but the rule is written pretty broadly. And so there's likelihood for unintended effects. And, you know, I want to stay on that 25% owner of a business aspect um, real quick. And, you know, let's say you're a 25% owner of a million dollar small business. Um, that means that you could be subject to a non-compete if you sell that business, but they don't break it out by size of business or revenue or any other 
um, factors. So you could have a 24% owner of a multi-billion dollar business who, you know, a non-compete would be illegal if, if tried to be enforced against them. So, you know, that's just an example of the potential unintended effects of, you know, this rule. And when a rule is um, in effect for a while, you kind of work through it and it works through the courts. But right now, these are just some of the concerns that, you know, we're thinking about. Does this proposed rule have any other effect on any other employment restrictions? So the rule provides a very broad definition of what constitutes a non-compete clause. Um, and the FTC has stated that de facto non-compete agreements, which have the same effect of prohibiting employment, are also prohibited. And they tell us that these de facto agreements include broad non-disclosure agreements, broad confidentiality clauses, and clauses that re would require an employee who resigns within a specific period of time to pay back an employer uh, for training costs. All of these agreements would be considered prohibited de facto non-compete clauses. Um, the FTC doesn't address whether non-solicit agreements would be considered a non-compete clause, but you know, essentially any any clause that has the effect of prohibiting you from going and working somewhere else um, would be banned under this proposed rule. Got it. So we talked about this 60 day comment period that we're in, um, and it looks like we're already 30 days into it. What are the next steps besides this comment period? What should we be on the lookout for? Sure. So, you know, we have the 60 day comment period. Then if the rule passes, the FTC will publish a final rule that will be effective 180 days after publication. So the earliest that this could become effective is September of 2023. Um, however, we don't think it's likely that this, this rule will go into effect um, by September. There's a high likelihood that, you know, if the rule as is, as written, um, is published, it'll be it'll be tied up in litigation for some time. You know, there'll be some groups that, uh, you know, the, the small business associations, you know, someone's going to bring a lawsuit, you know, um, against this rule. And as you know, lawsuits take lots of time. And so it, it, it'll be tied up for, for some time, but we're still very early in the process. There's still some revising that could happen. Um, and it'll be interesting to see how it shakes out. Tony, do you, I know this would be an FTC rule and the FTC is an executive agency. Is there any sort of indication that there might be any like federal legislation in the works from Congress? Not right now. Um, you know, President Biden, I believe, is using um, the FTC and this proposed rule as the sort of mechanism to get um, this accomplish, get the non-compete ban accomplished. You know, whether or not the rule goes into place as written, we don't know right now. You know, they could be taking a hard stance and saying, we're going to ban them all and then pull back a little bit and, and still, you know, have a pretty hard stance against non-competes. Um, lots of states have taken their stab at restricting non-competes. You know, for example, Michigan had proposed legislation that would ban non-competes below a certain income threshold level. So that's something that, you know, the FTC could do um, in, a, in a revision of the rule. But right now, this looks like to be the, the mechanism that they're going about this. Got it. Thanks. That was incredibly helpful, both those topics. Um, it's a lot of good information. Um, in some areas that are really interesting and could have big impacts here in Michigan and across the country. Our team of Foster Swift employment lawyers, Tony included, uh, we have Mike Bloom, Carl Buter in Grand Rapids, and Cliff Hammond as well. They really keep up on this stuff and they're publishing um, articles and e-blasts all the time on these, you know, little tweaks in the law that might create a big impact for businesses. So if you have any questions, keep up to date with our, our employment law team. You can also reach out to me or Tony directly. Looking forward to next month for March. Um, we're going to be coming back here on March 8th, right at noon. Our business attorney in, here in Southfield, Rob Hammer, he's going to be talking about the Corporate Transparency Act. This is another weird little um, law passed by Congress that's planned to take effect in 2024. Um, but there's a lot of changes that are going to affect businesses of all 
sizes. Rob's going to talk about all those potential changes and how to prepare for them. Um, so we will see you guys in March. If there's any questions, you can let me or Tony know and have a good rest of this blue sky day in Michigan.